So in this video we're going to introduce the ISLM model. The ISLM model is a uh, really quite central uh, piece in the toolkit for uh, any beginning economist and, and uh, even for uh, advanced economists. It remains, uh, despite all the criticism uh, leveled at it, uh, ISLM model is often criticized from uh, some people f uh, for being a misre misrepresentation of uh, Keynes's ideas, uh, and from others, it's uh, other people is criticized for uh, being outdated and uh, not sufficiently micro-founded. Uh, but then, uh, uh, pragmatic, uh, prominent economists uh, um, defend it as a, a good first approximation to policy making. Uh, these uh, people include uh, Krugman uh, and Mankiw, uh, so uh, that is not uh, a partisan issue. Uh, you have them from the uh, centrist left and the centrist right. Uh, but uh, let's leave that as a brief introduction and uh, only uh, to, to emphasize that uh, studying the ISLM model in an intermediate macroeconomics course is really quite crucial and uh, you should uh, uh, take good care of uh, working with this material. Now in this first uh, video, first introduction, we're going to do uh, derive the two curves, the IS curve and the LM curve uh, graphically and then uh, look at uh, these curves, uh, how they shift under certain conditions and, and, and lastly uh, consider the equilibrium between the two. So the ISL, IS and LM curves together will give you a first look at a macroeconomic equilibrium. So let's get right to it. Uh, here is uh, the IS curve. IS, of course, stands for investment and savings. So uh, the IS curve describes equilibrium in the goods market. Now, uh, you've studied uh, the goods market and we have a model to describe the goods market and it looks something like this here we have a 45 degree line aggregate demand income and a aggregate demand function Z now in this model uh, investment was exogenous what we want to do now is uh, make investment endogenous. So we're going to write investment as a function of income and the interest rate. Very simply, uh, investment increases with income. I'll add a plus sign here to denote that. And investment decreases with the income. The rationale is clear. Uh, if uh, current sales or expected sales here uh, rise, uh, it might be necessary to add an assembly line, add machinery, add a copier, etc., etc. And uh, secondly, if the interest rate rises, it becomes more expensive to do so, and you might think twice. How does that, how is that uh, as an investment function represented in this graph? This aggregate demand function will become dependent on an interest rate. Let's say I1. Now, uh, if the interest rate from I1 now falls, what will happen in this diagram? A lower interest rate, lower interest rate, let's write down here. Di delta i is negative, so the interest rate falls. That will lead to a rise in investment, which in this model, in this diagram, is on this axis. So this here includes the autonomous components of demand, which is as well the interest sensitive part of investment. If the interest rate falls, we will get a shift upwards due to that 
new lower interest rate and we get a z i2 where i2 is less than i1 okay so we have these two equilibria here and we know that uh, convergence if occurs in this stepwise manner due to the multiplier process so that the initial increase in interest sensitive investment leads to higher income which in turn leads to higher demand and so on and we're moving to this to this uh, new equilibrium in the goods market uh, that now we want to translate into i y space the uh, islm model is in i y which means that we will draw out here a model with i on this axis y on the horizontal axis and we can then just carry over carry down here uh, y1 which corresponds to i1 and y2 which corresponds to i2 now we can't carry the interest rates directly down to this axis but we know that i2 is below i1 so we can say that this here is i2 and here we have i1 so we had this decrease in the interest rate and this increase in income so that i1 corresponds to y1 and i2 corresponds to y2 and we get a downward sloping relationship that is what we call the is curve So we've made use of the fact that we have the same horizontal axis here, carry the y's down and then uh, note the, uh, the interest rate on the vertical axis and we get a downward sloping uh, IS curve. Now uh, let's think for a moment about what this means here. We have two points here uh, in the upper diagram, both of which are equilibria of the goods market so at both of these points uh, i is equal to s now these points correspond to this point and this point which means that uh, any point along the is curve is an equilibrium of the goods market that's the key here any point the is curve describes all those combinations of the interest rate and output where investment is equal to savings or equivalently uh, demand is equal to production okay briefly we'll consider the first example of policy here namely the is curve can be shifted to the right with for example an increase in government expenditures it would be shifted to the left with an increase in taxes so we can read for that for any given interest rate higher government spending leads to higher output so that's how we read the shift so uh, for a given interest rate we get output okay let's go to uh, LM which of course stands for liquidity and money namely the money demand function and money supply describing the financial markets now we had this relationship uh, that money demand and an equi equilibrium money supply is equal to is proportional to normal income and dependent on this liquidity preference function 
where the demand for money depends negatively on the interest rate. We're going to slightly rewrite this now, namely talk about real money, so the real stock of money on the left hand side and uh, that as a proportional uh, relationship to real output and liquidity preference. Okay, let's as well derive the LM curve graphically. We have of course a diagram for uh, the financial market here, the real stock of money. We have the real supply of money and then we have a money demand function and a real money demand function depending negatively on the interest rate. And we get a I1 equilibrium interest rate. Uh, now, we want to uh, express this financial market equilibrium as well in I Y space. Now, how does Y enter the financial market diagram? This money demand function corresponds to a level of uh, demand, transactions demand of Y1. What if now the level of demand rises? We know what happens. The money demand function shifts rightwards and we get a new equilibrium interest rate I2. So entirely analogous as in the previous example we can carry this interest rate right over here. Now we have the interest rate to carry over namely I1 and I2 where of course I1 is lower than I2 since that increase in uh, income leads to a higher interest rate if the central bank does not accommodate. Now we know as well that Y2 is larger than Y1 so we can uh, carry the incomes over to this axis and these two correspond now in such a manner that we're getting a upward sloping LM curve. So same as before, we have two equilibria here that describe financial market equilibria where uh, the money and bond demands, money and bond supplies are in equilibrium and the interest rate uh, clears uh, these demands which means that these points, in fact any point along the LM curve describes equilibria in the financial market. Along the LM curve uh, the financial market is in equilibrium. Let's as well for this case consider the first shift and here we're we have to think about a downward shift. So a downward shift would be due to an increase in the stock of money, increase in the supply of money, and the upward shift would be due to, for example, an increase in the price level, which would lead to a reduction in the real stock of money, so a monetary contra contraction which means that we can read here for any given level of income a higher price level leads to a higher interest rate or a, a higher stock of money leads to a lower interest rate. So causality in that sense moves from Y to I Let's quickly try to pull it together and look at the macroeconomic equilibrium. ISLM model is the first full-fledged macro model with two markets 
the goods market and the uh, financial market and you see it in depicted in I Y space with I on this axis and Y on this axis and then we have a IS curve downward sloping and an L LM curve upward sloping and the IS curve describes collects all those points where investment is equal to savings where the goods market is in equilibrium the LM curve describes all those points where the financial market is in equilibrium which means that there is one point where the two intersect where both the financial market and the goods market is in equilibrium and there's only one uh, one interest rate and output combination that allows that which is here I star Y star